What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson, and today we're going to learn how to chat like it's the 90s in Emacs with ERC. Let me grab my cursor here. Okay, so if you haven't already heard, it's possible to do yet another thing in Emacs that you might already be doing on a daily basis using some other set of programs. Uh, as we've already seen on this channel, you can use Emacs for uh, writing and managing your email, uh, so it probably won't come as a surprise to you that you can also use Emacs as a chat client. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the basics of using the IRC protocol with uh, Emacs built-in client called ERC so that you can chat with other people from the comfort of your Emacs window. So what is IRC? Uh, IRC is uh, otherwise known as Internet Relay Chat. It's basically a protocol that enables real-time chat across a number of servers that are connected together to form something called an IRC network. Uh, you might have heard about Freenode, uh, Fnet, Downnet, and many other popular IRC networks. Uh, so if you're not familiar with IRC, you can think of it kind of like a Slack or Discord server. You join a server on a particular IRC network, and there are a bunch of channels that you can join uh, to chat about a variety of topics. Let me turn the volume down a little bit here. And uh, one difference, though, is that you have to join the channels that are on the IRC server. You can't just like join and be, a, be in all of the channels at once, sort of like you are in Discord. On IRC, you have to find channels to join or at least know what channel you want to join and then join those particular channels, which is probably a good thing, though, because there are like hundreds or thousands of channels on IRC servers. So you probably don't want to be in all of them at the same time because it would drive you insane. Um, but another uh, thing about IRC that isn't so good as things like Slack or Discord is that you don't. Uh, immediately have access to the history of chat in channels or in conversations like you do in those other programs. But this is something that you can actually solve using uh, a couple different techniques that we might talk about in a future video. So the nice thing about IRC is that it's an open protocol, unlike these other programs I mentioned, which means that there are an incredible number of clients available for it on the internet. And what's even better is that you can join a server right now today uh, with no account creation necessary using packages that are already included in Emacs. So we're going to take a look at one of those packages today, and that's called ERC. So ERC is a featureful and an extensible IRC client that comes built into Emacs and is written in Emacs Lisp. It's not the only IRC client that comes with Emacs. If you've seen anything on this channel, you've seen that there's probably like 15 ways to do things already built into Emacs. So the IRC client situation is no different. Uh, there's another one called RC IRC that's already in the box. But uh, I feel that IRC is probably the one that you're going to want to use long term if you stick with the inbox clients. So uh, the useful features of ERC is that you can connect to multiple servers at once, which probably isn't going to be very common. You'll, you might stick to one IRC server, but it can be useful for using other programs like Biddleby, which is a program that allows you to do your IM or instant messaging on protocols like Telegram, Facebook Messenger, other things like that uh, over IRC. So uh, that's one thing that's useful about ERC is you can connect to that kind of uh, server as well. Uh, you can also complete the names of other users while typing. So when you're ch chatting with someone or chatting in a, a room and you want to reply to someone, you can just press tab on someone's name to complete it. Uh, you can also highlight your own name or other terms in messages. So if you're tracking a particular topic in a channel, then you can have those lines be highlighted by ER ERC. Uh, you can also track the activity in channels in your mode line. So whenever someone sends a message to you directly, or maybe there's um, some messages in the channel that you're watching, uh, that can show up in your mode line so that you know that there has been activity there. Uh, you can also see emojis and messages, but that's a plugin that you have to enable. It's something that's built in, but you have to enable it. Uh, also, another thing to enable is uh, desktop notifications whenever you're mentioned. So you can get little pop-up bubbles that say when someone sent you a message. And also, you can just script it with any additional behavior you want. Since this is Emacs Lisp, it's just as hackable as anything else in Emacs. And you can do even things like writing a chat bot or uh, auto replies to people or anything you want to do. So it's, it's very flexible. <coughs> Excuse me. So one really nice thing about it is that you don't really even need to configure it to use it. You can just use it right out of the box, which is what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to... Uh, connect to an IRC server, and just some general tips on using IRC using the ERC client. If you want some more information about ERC, definitely check out <coughs> excuse me, the ERC manual. But I will warn you in advance, it doesn't have a whole lot of info. It, it does give you some things that you might want to know, but it doesn't tell you a lot. So just keep that in mind. So first of all, uh, to engage in chat on an IRC server, you have to first join a server. Thankfully, it's very easy. You can just run the ERC TLS command to connect to a particular IRC server address and you'll be prompted 
for a nickname to use on the server, which is basically the name that other people will see you as, and also your <clears throat> uh, the, the password that you might log into the server with. But if you don't already have an account, you don't have to put in a password, just press enter on that prompt. Um, you can also use the ERC command, but I don't recommend that. I highly recommend using ERC TLS because um, since uh, IRC is a very text oriented protocol, you want that uh, communication to be encrypted as it's being uh, sent between you and the server, especially for things like whenever you have to type your password in. So use ERC TLS to connect to uh, IRC networks that are capable of doing SSL or TLS connections. And um, one really good one that I recommend for that is Libra Chat. Uh, it's a newer IRC network that just uh, sprung up in the wake of the free node IRC takeover debacle. Uh, there's a lot of projects there that you know already, like uh, Emacs, Geeks, there's official channels for those there, also for Source Hut, and many, many other projects that you probably are using currently. So. Uh, it's a nice place to go and join and talk to people about the programs that you're already using. And you can also join the System Crafters channel that's there. There's probably about 20, 25 of us that are there chatting. And it's another fun place to hang out with the System Crafters community. So what we're going to do is join the Libra Chat IRC server. And then uh, we'll, we'll see what we do for the, the rest of the sort of functionality of ERC. So I'm going to jump over to a, another uh, Emacs configuration that I have here this is a more basic configuration just to show how things work out of the box and I'm going to run with uh, meta X you can see down in the echo area I'm going to run ERC TLS it's going to ask me which server I want to connect to I'm going to type in IRC .libra .chat. Uh, I'll leave the IRC port there because that's the right port for this particular server and then I'm going to use a different nickname because I, I'm already logged into that server with another Emacs session. So I'll use something like uh, Davy Wheel Test. And for password, I'm just going to leave that empty. And what's going to happen is that it's going to connect to that server in a buffer in Emacs. Uh, and basically, this is the status of you connecting to the server. And once it finally finishes connecting, you're going to see a lot of information that gets written out about the server that you connect to, maybe some links to documentation or their policies, etc. And then once uh, you basically see this end of the MOTD command, the message of the day, you know that you're connected and you can start uh, interacting with the server, joining channels, etc. So uh, the next thing that you'll want to do is to try to join a channel. So you can use the slash join command. And in IRC, all of the commands that you send to the server are all going to have the slash at the beginning and then some word and then maybe some parameters after. So in this case, we're typing slash join and we're going to join up to the system crafters channel. So when I do that, it's actually going to create a new buffer in Emacs for that channel. And the name of the buffer will be the channel name. And then when you're in that buffer, you can type messages to people in the channel. And you'll also see the messages that are coming from the people who are in the channel chatting already. Um, and the nice thing is that this is an, an Emacs buffer like any other buffer. So you can switch between that and the, the files that you're editing. Or maybe you can have a separate frame open that has this chat buffer. You can treat it like anything else in Emacs. And this is sort of the power of this. You don't have to have a separate program to interact with people. You can actually just be in Emacs and you're already an um, e efficient environment. So I'm going to join the System Crafters channel uh, in this other configuration. So slash join, <coughs> excuse me, uh, System Crafters. And now we are in the System Crafters channel. Uh, we get a little bit of information about the channel when we join. We see the topic of the channel, which is basically information about what the channel is for, maybe some links to uh, rules of the channel, maybe some other information that might be useful to you. So definitely look at the topic whenever you join a new channel. Uh, you can also <clears throat> see who set the topic and also when. Uh, and you can also see a list of who's already in this channel. So you can see a number of names here of people who are currently here. You may recognize some of these people from the system uh, crafters community already. And, and we're here now. Uh, we're able to start sending messages to other people. So uh, let's just try to type a message and see if anybody responds. And then uh, basically, if anybody's here right now and sees that message, they might reply to us. So we'll give them just a second for that. So uh, one thing you might notice is that the representation of all the stuff on the screen here is pretty minimalistic compared to uh, Discord or Slack or anything that you might have been using before. And you can see here that Sham has replied to us. Hello. Um, the thing to note is that this is a text oriented protocol and the display of everything is done in text. It's because IRC was created back in like the late 80s and you know most interfaces to things were very minimal on computers before you know graphical compute, computing interfaces uh, became the norm and you had images everywhere and buttons and whatnot. 
uh, here on IRC, you're going to have a lot of text and you can improve how this stuff looks with some um, additions to ERC. But um, out of the box, it's basically just, just going to be text messages that you see that are, that are being sent back and forth. But really, if you're chatting, that's all you need. You just need to be able to send and receive messages from other people. They can po post links here. They can post links to images. They can do a lot of things. And then with plugins, you can actually make this experience a little bit more rich. But for today, uh, we are just going to show the basic text interface of, uh, of IRC. So um, I think that's it for joining the channel. So now if you want to leave a channel, you can use the part command, so slash part. So if you ever join a channel and maybe you're not really interested in the conversation or maybe you meant to join a different channel, you can use slash part to leave that channel. And um, if you use it in a channel buffer, it will leave the current channel. Uh, but it, you can also pass the name of a channel to this command to leave a specific channel that's maybe in some other buffer if you want to. So just letting people know what I'm doing here. So I'm going to type part and then that basically tells me I've left that channel. So now I won't receive any new messages in this buffer for this channel and I can just uh, kill the buffer basically after I'm finished with it. So um, that's leaving a channel. You can also list all of the available channels on the server by, by typing the slash list command. Now this may not work for me right now because they, they seem to throttle it. Uh, and the reason why is because there are usually so many channels on these servers that they can't really display all of them to you very frequently because it's a lot of you know information being sent back and forth. So I'm going to type slash list. Okay, good. So at least it does give me the list of channels. And as you can see, there are many, many, many channels here. Lots of them that start with two hash marks, which I think on... Um, uh, on Libra chat, they are sort of like topic channels that aren't specific to a specific, specific app or community. So maybe you'll see... Uh, some uh, random topics here, but then you have other ones. And one thing I should mention is that since this is a normal Emacs buffer, we can use the normal searching commands like control S to search for things in this buffer. So if I use control S, I can search for hash geeks um, or even geeks. Let's just try geeks. And we'll see a couple of instances where geeks is mentioned in the channels list. I think that it doesn't load all the channels up sometimes, like it, it times out or something. So I don't get to the actual place where the real geeks channel is in this list i'm not sure what the deal is with that but uh, you can search in this list and i believe there are parameters you can send to the list command to filter things down further but i don't really know them at the moment so if someone else does feel free to leave that in the in the chat comments so um well let's just try it i'm gonna type list slash geeks and see if it does anything okay so it does show me that there is a geeks channel that's good all right so uh listing a channel can be useful if you want to see uh, let's try that one more time, uh, list geeks, uh, to see what channels are available. And on this channel entry, I think if I press enter, it should join the channel. Um, probably it didn't right now. So anyway, I assumed it would join. It didn't join. That's my mistake. Uh, but that is one useful way to find out what channels are available. And we can use that join command we saw before to join the geeks channel if we wanted to. All right. So, um, Next is that you can find details about a specific user with the who is command. So if you're talking to somebody and you want to know uh, more about them, which really isn't a lot of information, but uh, you can use the who is command to ask the server about that person. So I'm going to type in who is David Will because it's my actual account that I'm using. And it tells me that uh, David Will is David Wilson. So it gives me the, the full name of the user if they, uh, if they specify one. Some people don't do that. It also tells me um, information about me that uh, my username is Davy Will, and um, it, I'm, you see a cloak right now, which is a, a feature of Libra Chat where it sort of hides your IP address. Otherwise, if you don't have a cloak, you'll, it'll show your IP. You can look up that information on uh, the Libra Chat website, I believe. Uh, and also, I can give that in the, in the show notes if necessary. It also tells me which server that I'm connected to. Apparently, I'm connected to a server in Stockholm. Don't know why, but that's the case. I'm using a secure connection. I'm logged in as Davy Will. I think sometimes it also shows what channels I'm a member of, but in this case, it doesn't. But um, yeah, just a little bit of information about the user that you're asking about. Um, also, you can send a user a private message using the query command. There's a couple ways to do this, but the query command is probably the most um, convenient one. When you use the query command with a particular username, it will create a new uh, message buffer between you and that person. And when you start typing messages in that buffer, it will get sent privately to that person and any replies from that person will be sent privately back to you. So if I were to use query, David Will, then it pulls up a new buffer for me to speak to myself basically. 
and I can type a message and say hello. And oh, oh, okay, so this is a little bit different on this server because apparently you have to log in, you have to create a user account on the server to send messages to other people, which is kind of nice because it means that people can't spam you. But the idea is that with this query, you should be able to send a message to someone. Now, when I say about registering a user, let me just make a quick digression on that. Uh, you will want to do, well, actually, this is a great opportunity to, to look at query. So I'll do query Nick serve. Um, and this pulls up a new chat with the Nick serve bot, basically. I can type in help here, and it gives me a number of things that I uh, might want to do, a number of commands I might want to do. And this register command is the one that uh, you need to d use if you want to register an account on this IRC server to get more functionality, like being able to send messages to other people. So uh, definitely take this opportunity to query Nick serve and then maybe set up an account for yourself on the server, which is a pretty useful thing to do. So let's see what next you can also send a single message to another user that doesn't create a buffer like this for you using the slash message message command. Um, but if they reply to you, then you might get a query buffer that pops up for for your UI. But that's probably fine. If someone replies to a message, you probably do want to have a conversation with them. So uh, it's, it's not really a problem. Um, Next is uh, changing your nickname. So let's say you aren't satisfied with the name that you chose when you joined the server. You can use the slash Nick command to change your name. And in this case, I'm making an example of changing my name to David Will X. So let's see if I can do that here. So Nick David Will X, if I can type it correctly. And now it says my new nickname is David Will X. And if you're in other chat rooms, people will see that you changed your name and then we'll have to refer to you as that new name. Uh, typically, though, if you register a username, you probably stick with that username and not really change it much. But if you wanted to do that, it's something that you can do. Uh, also, you can quit the IRC server if you want to just disconnect and be done with your session with the slash quit command. Uh, you can also add a message that people see when you quit if you are joined to certain channels. Like when you're in channels and you quit, you can leave a message basically to say why you quit. Uh, you don't really have to do this. You probably already sent a message in a channel to say that you're leaving, but it is something that you can do. So. I'm going to um, use the quit command and say, see ya. And then basically it disconnects me from the server and it says my quit message was see ya. So uh, that is the way to disconnect if you ever want to do that. Um, also, you can reconnect to the server, uh, which can be useful sometimes whenever maybe uh, you get disconnected for, for some reason, like you lose internet access, or if your computer goes to sleep and wakes back up again, you might be disconnected. Uh, you can use the reconnect command to reestablish that connection. I think I should be able to use it in this buffer, but actually I think it, no, no, it, it, it finished it right here. So let's just uh, kill this and reconnect to uh, LibreChat. Um, I can use up here, I think, to get to the LibreChat entry that I had. I'll use test again. All right, so now I'm I'm signing in without a password, and then eventually it will uh, finish connecting, and I can use reconnect if I ever wanted to reconnect. So basically, connection fail, reestablishing connection, and it just it starts the connection over again. If you're in a chat room currently and you lose your connection, you can also use that reconnect con command in the actual chat buffer uh, to to initiate that. Uh, definitely, it's a, a thing you'll have to do sometimes because ERC, it will try to reconnect on your behalf if you lose internet, but sometimes it doesn't do a good job of it, especially if it's your computer waking up from sleep. So you may have to use reconnect to initiate that whenever uh, that happens. All right, so let's talk about a very, very basic uh, ERC configuration you can use to get started. Um, this is just a, a number of variables that we're going to set in ERC since it's already in box. We don't have to use use package to download the package or anything like that. We can just directly drop this uh, configuration into our um, Emacs config and then um, basically evaluate it so that it gets applied. So if I were to load up my uh, let's see if I can get to that configuration path code uh, bear Emacs init.el and I'll go here and then uh, uh, paste in the configuration and then I can go to the end of this and evaluate it and basically what this does there's a few things it does first of all it says my sets my default server for ERC to irc.libra.chat so every time I connect to try to connect using ERC TLS it will use this um, server as the default um, also you can set your nickname here so if it if it picks the wrong name for you whenever it automatically uh, tries to connect uh, you can set the nickname you want. So in this case, I can set it to uh, David Will Test again. Um, I can also set my user full name to David Wilson for that to show up there. You, you also don't have to set that if you don't want to. 
Uh, another thing is um, for tracking channel activity, which I haven't shown yet, um, the tracking information they show in the mode line is actually very short. It only shows one character for everything. So I like to increase this so I can see the names of the channels that have activity. So I put it to eight characters. And then you can have a set of channels that will be automatically joined every time you join a particular IRC server. So in this case, we have, um, oops, that, that's a little bit of a typo there. Uh, IRC.Libra chat. So when you join IRC.Libra chat, it will automatically join the System Crapper channel and the Emacs channel. Uh, last couple things are just like some conveniences for whenever ERC opens buffers for you. Uh, first of all, uh, whenever you part a channel, we should automatically just kill that buffer because we don't need it anymore. And then this last one, ERC auto query, uh, whenever someone sends you a message and it creates a new buffer, maybe you don't want it to pop up automatically wherever you are. Instead, you tell it to bury the buffer so that it is um, in your buffer list, but you have to go select it to, uh, to get to it. So that's something that can be useful uh, for that case. So I'll save this and then I'll try to reconnect. Well, maybe I can just show the chat. Let me jump back to the uh, Libre chat buffer and I'll join uh, System Crafters one more time, but then I'll change to, um, I'll change back to this buffer. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my other running session and send a message in this channel so we can see the activity in the, um, in the mode line. So uh, I'm gonna type in testing here and then I'll go back to this and now what we'll see is down in the mode line there is a system c here because i basically said eight characters is what i want to see for a truncation of names there, the system crafters channel has activity and if i click that it should well okay in this case it doesn't open the buffer but i can switch to the system crafters buffer to then see the activity and once i go to that buffer that mode line information goes away so it's basically a way for you to keep track of the irc channels that you're in while you're working on stuff and then you can easily switch back to those channels I think there's another um, key binding you can use for that. Control C, let's see. So is it like tracking? Okay, it's not loaded right now, but there, there is a way to get to those more, more quickly, but I think it's not turned on right now. But anyway, uh, the idea is that you can use this basic configuration to have a little bit better of an experience out of the box with ERC. And in future videos, we'll talk a little bit more about how to con uh, configure it, e it even further. So uh, if you want to try out ERC and IRC, definitely come chat with us in the, uh, the System, System Crafters channel on irc.libra.chat. Um, uh, our community member, Sham, wrote up some helpful tips on the wiki, the new System Crafters wiki, to, uh, to help you find your way there and some other things you might want to do to uh, make it easier to use IRC. So definitely go check out this link. Uh, thank you to Sean for writing this up. Um, also, if you are a, a longtime IRC user watching this, uh, please feel free to leave a note in the comments with some of your favorite IRC tips so that other people might be able to benefit from those, like maybe some commands that you like or an IRC client that you like or, or maybe an IRC server or a channel or whatever you want to do. Just leave a comment below and let people know um, what it is that, uh, that you want to tell them. So uh, before we go, I'd like to thank all of my sponsors. Uh, these people have decided to sponsor the work that I'm doing, making videos about GNU Geeks, GNU Emacs, etc. And I'm very thankful to them for their support. If you are interested in uh, also sponsoring the work that I'm doing, please check out the links in the description below. I'm on both GitHub sponsors and on uh, Patreon. There's also links to PayPal and GitHub sponsors for one-time tips. And if you aren't interested in contributing in that way, the one thing you could do is to like the video and maybe share it with other people. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, all that's very helpful for helping other people find the videos and uh, for making the community even bigger and better than it is right now. So um, yeah, in future videos, we'll talk more about IRC and improving the setup to make things even better and then maybe provide some other ways for you to uh, use IRC on mobile and anything else that you might be interested. So let me know in the comments if there's any questions that you have or anything else you might want to see in the future. So thanks a lot for watching this video and uh, let me know uh, what you think. Uh, until next time, happy hacking. Thanks.